here with much props gonna give you another how-to video today I am gonna try and do a request that somebody has been asking for a while I've got a friend over on Facebook who has been asking me to build a necromancer staff which I'm not quite sure exactly what that means but I'm gonna take a stab at it regardless probably make it a little bit more gory than he intended for it to be and uh, I'm going to use random Halloween parts that I bought from decoration stores uh, last year. So I know a lot of people have been putting out quick little bills that you can have for your Halloween stuff. I thought why not prepare you for the after Halloween sale. So things that you could probably look for to build some pretty cool stuff. Um, always like skulls and skeletons and things like that usually make for good prop pieces. So. Today, I'm going to build a necromancer staff out of random Halloween decorations. Let's get to building. Most of these parts were bought from Spirit Halloween the day after Halloween. Some of these items were like up to 75% off if you can catch them at the right time. I generally buy bones, body parts, random plastic weapons, all the skulls I can find, and bits that light up or have electronic movement. Also, whatever Fallout or other video game slash movie stuff that I'm into at the moment, I make sure and buy up also. I am using a plastic heart, cow skull, dog skeleton, PVC pipe, and Maleficent horns to make the base for this staff. <laughs> The original horns were used a while back for some other build and I thought these Maleficent horns would be pretty cool on it so I tried a bunch of different angles and finally decided on one that worked well. The only catch was I kind of had to cut a little notch off of them to make them fit well. Really it's kind of just a trial and error thing. I've done this type of thing for a while now so I, I kind of lucked out and got it on the first go. To secure the horns to the skull I glue in a big chunk of foam that plugs both holes then I simply hot glue the mess out of it I even use the hot glue to build up a transition ridge on the horn from the skull The skull didn't look gnarly enough to me so I decided I was going to add an extra set of teeth on the front here. To make it super sturdy and kind of blend in a little better I decided I was going to use some thermal plastic. This is polyplastic and yes I know I get people tell me every time I use it, you know that you can use hot water to melt the plastic easier. Yeah I know but I, I don't have an oven in my workspace. It's in the kitchen and I don't want to have to 
drip hot water across everywhere. So I'm just gonna use my heat gun. And I kinda know a little bit about thermoplastic because believe it or not, the way I got started here on YouTube was making videos for a thermal plastic channel, Polyplastics. So yeah, I know I know a little bit about it. You can also speed the process up of letting it cool by icing it down or using an upside down can. And the water that you see there is used to kind of rub against the surface after I'm done shaping it to get rid of my fingerprints and smooth it out. To join my teeth, I need to create a roof for them to mount and push into. So I score up the underside of the skull here, smush the thermoplastic into a general shape I need. Then it's just pushing the teeth into place and getting them to cool quickly. I put a couple into place and then hit them with the upside down can of air to freeze them quickly from drooping into the areas I don't want. If I need to rework an area or it starts to set up, I can just hit it with a heat gun again or I can hand torch a little small spot. You got to work really fast. I also went ahead and plugged up the screw holes on the bottom of the skull with hot glue and if it was a big enough area I used the thermal plastic for it also. I went outside and bent the PVC pipe into the general shape that I wanted to prevent kinks while bending PVC. You tape up one end, pour in some sand or dirt, and then slowly heat up the curve working your way around. You can look at my candy cane pickaxe video from Fortnite on how to do this technique in more depth. I drill out some holes on the rib cage and slide the PVC into place. To secure the ribs to the pipe, I decided to make a good, strong, sturdy connection with some pop rivets. You could cover them up with hot glue or something else, but I wasn't really worried about that at the time because it's on the back of the stuff anyways. I drill some holes into parts and permanently pop them together. I put several up the spine to keep it locked in place. Thank you. 
Again, it has a lot to make pretty large items. And while that's not probably a big deal for a lot of people, I don't have a lot of space to build these massive things in. This thing is gonna be like six foot tall by the time I'm done with it. And I need to think about how I can sell it and ship it because a six foot tall box is gonna cost a fortune to ship it across the country. So I'm gonna use these PVC connections to like build some segments here. So instead of six foot, it's now three two foot sections. I just picked them up at the home improvement store and while I was there I didn't realize that I was out of PVC glue so you see me using super glue here. Obviously that's a better choice using PVC glue but I didn't have any. It'll work for what I need to and if I'm not abundantly certain that it will stay you can always add a little screw in there to secure it further. The spine for the dog I pulled this from was not long enough and bent the wrong way so I decided to make my own. I could have used more thermoplastic but this prop is already getting pretty heavy and I wanted to kind of limit the extra amount of weight that I'm going to put on that neck so I decided to use foam, 6mm and 10mm to be specific. I wrapped a strip of 6mm around the pipe and then sanded some random grooves into it then added the vertebrae processes, that's the parts that protrude out from it and then carved them basically out of some 10 millimeter foam into shape and super glued them into place. Make sure to leave spaces for like the discs. I use a cutting wheel to carve in the wood grain on the bottom part of this staff. Make sure to wear a respirator and work with a face shield anytime you are operating your rotary tool, especially when using a cutting wheel. These things can and have exploded on me before. Without this face protection, I could have lost an eye, so definitely be safe when using your power tools. I just loosely carve some grooves into the PVC. I try my best to keep my hands out of the path of the blade and always work away from myself when I can. Sped up it kind of looks like I'm pulling back and forth but I'm not. I'm letting it bite into the material and drag away from me then I am pulling it off the material, repositioning and making the next pass. Everything is sanded, then the foam gets plasti dip, and everything else gets spray paint as a primer. To paint the bone detail, I am just dry brushing on a dry mix of off-white and brown acrylic paint. These are Plat FX acrylic paints. You see me use these pretty much all the time now. I make light passes with relatively dry chip brush, and it generally takes about three or four passes to get the color variation that I want.
Once my white layers have dried, I hit it with a clear coat to prepare it for the washes. If not, it kind of soaks into it and kind of makes it a little harder for you to pull the paint back off. So I use some brown and black and a little yellow in a couple of spots with a wet chip brush. I slather it all over the surface and wipe away most of it with a paper towel, leaving the paint in the crevices. Generally, this takes about two or three layers, so now I'm about seven or eight layers deep into my paint job. Yeah, it, it does add up, but the overall effect will be worth it. Once again, I clear coated everything to prepare it for the next layer of paint. I mix up a dark red in the same acrylic paints as before, and now I am adding some 5 minute epoxy to the paint. It will make the blood kind of look permanently wet, which is pretty awesome. I learned this from watching an SKS video a while back, and I've tried it on a recent mass build that I did, the ant and the werewolf build. I really like the effect, and now I'm trying to find like projects to literally just be able to use this effect in. It does let off a pretty nasty smell though so be sure I'm working a well ventilated area and give it plenty of time to kind of air out after you're done building it. I screwed on some little eyelets onto the heart so that I can attach some wire and secure it to the build. It is a bit tricky to weave the wire in and make it go through those tiny little eyelets, but I eventually get it in there and it secures it pretty nicely. I also thought about adding a light behind the heart or maybe even making the eyes glow red with some LEDs, but I kind of ran out of time, so it is what it is now. That middle piece of the PVC pipe is bare for a reason. I wanted to add a faux leather fur grip to it. The fur will hide the PVC connection points and I wanted something comfortable to hold on to. So I start by gluing on the faux fur around those parts and I'm using hot glue because super glue will bleach the fur. Then to cover up the end of it, I wrap the faux leather around like I would a tennis racket back when I was a tennis coach at school. The wrap was a little short, so I quickly improvised and found some faux suede string that I had laying around to bridge the gap. Once I started wrapping it around, I decided, hey, let's just incorporate that all the way back down. So I wrapped that around the seam of the black leather, and then I tied a voodoo necklace onto the top to kind of add an extra little dangly detail.
and we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty gnarly. Um, it is definitely a very large thing to behold. Um, I put the wood grain texture on the end, did a little bit of faux leather wrappage here, along with my voodoo necklaces I made into some random dangly bits. Uh, the cage here with the bleeding heart, I love that blood technique that I learned from watching SKS. Um, it's a super cool uh, technique that kind of makes your blood always look wet. Um, and I had to kind of improvise because I, for some reason I didn't have a spine just laying around, so I had to make my own, but um, it was easy enough with a little bit of foam, so yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and terrify your friends into staying away from you while you walk around with your uh, necromancer staff. I, I don't know. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Um, you want to like give them a little kiss? Give them a little kissy kiss? Give them a little kissy kiss? Ah. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see me build more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.